Hi there, welcome to another Niggle Picks video. I'm Nigel. Uh, you find me in the beautiful Luddenden Valley. Okay, that's not the most beautiful building, but there you go. And I mean a graveyard. Most of the information in this video is based on research by Wainstall's local, Kim Pearson. It tells the story of the Wainstall Waves and their journey from the workhouse to independence. All of the near 250 girls to be employed at Wainstall's came from Liverpool to work in the mills belonging to a family called the Calverts. Those mills were Square Mill, Spring Mill, Lum Mill and Wainstall's Mills. The girls came from the Brownhill Workhouse and the Kirkdale Industrial School. Some of them could be found there together with their mothers, mostly due to Liverpool being one of Britain's largest ports and their fathers would be away at sea for very long periods of time and they would leave the families behind to fend for themselves. The mills at Wainstalls date back to the early 1800s and were worsted spinning mills. Conditions of work there were fairly harsh, but by the 1860s, various factory acts began to protect workers in respect to hours worked. Contrary to some opinions, the Wainstall Waifs were not slaves, but most of their income went towards their upkeep. They lived in various cottages which were adjacent or quite near to their place of employment. Girls were preferred to boys for the position, as they were thought to be a bit more reliable. They were recruited from the age of about 11 or 12. Some were brought in from the age of 10, but usually these girls had elder siblings who were also being brought in. It should be remembered that the Wainstall Waifs, as they became to be known, were employed under contract as apprentices. In fact, through their experiences in the mills, they, in effect, learned to trade as worsted spinners. The skill they acquired was in fact a form of female empowerment and although the girls were no longer under the guardianship of what was then I and I Calverts, at 17 or 18 they were free to leave. Many stayed, earned a wage and integrated into the local Wainstalls community. If they stayed with the company they were described as loosed. Some later married local men and their descendants still live locally today. Before the girls were transported by train from Liverpool to Luddenden Foot, the girls were given a medical checkup by Henry Briggs. Dr. Briggs was born locally in Mythamroyd, but had his surgery in Burnley. The girls were tested mainly for tuberculosis, which was known by TB. It was a rampant disease and a major killer. After arriving at Luddenden Foot Station, the girls were taken by horse and cart up to the fresh mool and air of Wainstalls, a completely different world from the squalid urban environment of the city of Liverpool. I was given notice of this story when somebody mentioned to me that they'd seen a gravestone at Luddenden Dean Chapel. That's the place where I filmed my introduction. On it were the names seven of these young ladies. The names on the gravestone of plot 183, which was purchased by Jonathan Calvert in 1876, are Mary Ellen Clark, often employed at Spring Mill, registered 24th of Jan 1877, aged 14 years. Alice Devitt, employed at Jonathan Calvert's mill, died 11th of August 1886, aged 12 years. Elizabeth Edwards, orphan, employed at Spring Mill, died 12th of April 1887, aged 
18 years. Jane Johnson, orphan, lodged at Folly Hall, died 22nd of December, 1887, aged 11 years. Sarah Shaw, orphan, lodged at Folly Hall, died 17th of May, 1892, aged 15 years. And Maria Emery, orphan, lodged at Kell Butts, died 20th of January, 1895, aged 15 years. Next door in plot 184, there are also some girls buried. This one was purchased by Ian I. Calvert in 1889. In the grave are Annie Lockhard. Now, Annie is listed on the other gravestone, although she is in this one. She died on the 7th of March, 1895, aged 16. Mary Murphy died on the 4th of July, 1900, aged 16. And Alice Jubilee Jones died 25th of August, 1902, aged 15. Most of the girls listed in these two gravestones died of TB, except for Alice Jubilee Jones, whose official cause of death is listed as suicide. <laughs>